Chances are you have a Bible somewhere in your home. Year after year, the Bible is the world's best-selling book. Yet most human beings know little about this amazing book and what it contains. This book reveals the mysteries of life. It reveals the future of mankind. And the Bible can help you in many ways, even far above your greatest hopes and dreams. Stay tuned. <laughs> Tomorrow's World presents Roderick C. Meredith, Richard Ames, John O'Gwen, bringing you the good news of your future in Tomorrow's World. This week, Richard Ames explains... How the Bible can help you. And now, Richard Ames. Warm greetings to you all. Multiple billions of people around the world have Bibles. Even as far back as 1950, one reputable magazine reported that, quote, by the end of 1950, the 500th anniversary of Gutenberg's invention, over 2 billion Bibles and parts of Bibles will have been printed with 25 million more being added each year, end of quote. Now listen to this. 93% of Americans own a Bible, and 27% own four or more, according to the Princeton Research Center. By contrast, fewer than 5% of the French own a Bible. In Australia, the New South Wales Bible Society has recently published a Bible written in the Australian vernacular. It is entitled, The Aussie Bible, Well, Bits of It Anyway. On ABC National Radio, Hamish Robertson described it this way, quote, It's less than 100 pages long, and it contains cartoons depicting the three wise men as drovers camped around a fire and angels as aborigines. The intention is to bring Bible stories to a whole new generation of readers, but there are concerns that purists within the church won't approve, end of quote. The Aussie Bible is described as a retelling of the story of Jesus' life rather than a translation. Perhaps such publications will encourage more Aussies to read a good translation of the Bible, such as the King James Version or the New King James Version. If you do not have a Bible, I urge you to buy one. If you've hidden your Bible in a closet or a dresser somewhere, I encourage you to find it and read it. On today's program, we'll briefly discuss five ways the Bible can help you. Yes, the Bible can benefit your life far beyond your expectations, if you follow its instructions. And we'll be offering a free audio tape of this program. The audio tape will include a very helpful segment on principles of Bible study. Be sure to write down the address and phone number to order your free copy. You can also order our free literature and audio tapes on our website, at tomorrowsworld.org. How important is the Bible in your life? Do you read it at least once a week? How frequently do Americans read the Bible? The Gallup poll reports, quote, in terms of frequency of readership, 16% of Americans say that they read the Bible every day. 21% say they read it weekly. 12% say they read the Bible monthly. 10% say less than monthly and 41% say that they rarely or never read the Bible, end of quote. Personally, I try to read the Bible every day. I used to come home tired from work at the office and turn on the television set. But I often found that I would waste my time watching too much television. So just as soon as I get home and find a comfortable chair to sit in, I now make it a general habit to pick up a Bible and read it for about 10 minutes. This helps start my evening with a positive perspective, and my wife appreciates a positive attitude as well. But let's realize just how important the Bible is to each of us personally and to us nationally. The great American statesman, Daniel Webster, gave this warning about our national future. Quote, If there is anything in my thoughts or style to commend, the credit is due to my parents for instilling in me an early love of the Scriptures. If we abide by the principles taught in the Bible, 
our country will go on prospering and to prosper. But if we and our posterity neglect its instructions and authority, no man can tell how sudden a catastrophe may overwhelm us and bury all our glory in profound obscurity. End of quote. No great empire or nation will ever endure without strong spiritual character and integrity. The history of the world teaches us that profound lesson. Let's understand. The Bible gives us the way to godly living and righteous character. All nations on earth should strive to live by it. The first president of the United States, George Washington, believed in that principle. He stated, quote, It is impossible to rightly govern the world without God and the Bible. We can truly understand what George Washington meant only if we understand what the Bible is. If you have your Bible, turn to 2 Timothy 3.16. What does the Bible say about itself? 2 Timothy 3, verse 16. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Or as the NIV Bible translates it, all Scripture is God-breathed. That's an accurate translation. The English Standard Version translates it, Scripture is breathed out by God. The Creator wants us to find the true way to eternal life, and He has revealed that way in your Bible. The Bible has many benefits for each and every one of us. Let's now briefly discuss five of the many benefits of your Bible. Benefit number one is, the Bible reveals the way to life beyond death. In other words, the way to eternal life and salvation. If you die, will you live again? We've answered that question on previous programs. But look at what the Apostle Paul wrote the young evangelist Timothy. 2 Timothy 3, verse 14. Notice just how important the Bible, that is, the Holy Scripture is, to our eternal life. 2 Timothy 3, verse 14. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Yes, the Holy Scriptures lead us to salvation through faith which is in Jesus Christ. Notice two important points in this verse. First, Timothy was taught the Scriptures in his childhood. I hope you parents are teaching your children the Scriptures. Notice also that when Paul wrote this message to Timothy, the New Testament had not been completely written. The Holy Scriptures Timothy studied as a child were the Old Testament. The whole Bible, my friends, from beginning to end is inspired by God. You and I need salvation. We need forgiveness of sins. Why? Because sin produces eternal death. Romans 6.23 tells us, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life, in Christ Jesus our Lord. What we earn by our sinful life is death. But God sent a Savior to the world, Jesus Christ. He paid for our sins by His blood. So if we follow the Savior's instructions, we can be forgiven of our sins. As Jesus Himself preached in Mark 1, verse 15, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. And the Apostle Peter said in Acts 2 and verse 38, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, or the forgiveness of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. My friends, some of you have been sitting on the fence for a long time. You may have been thinking about committing your life to Christ, but you've been procrastinating. Well, it's time for you to act. We have ministers available for counsel around the world. If you would like to counsel, if you'd like to make a life commitment to your Savior, just tell the operator you would like ministerial counsel. Just call the number on your screen. You need to make that commitment and take action now. How can the Bible help you? The Bible is able to make you wise unto salvation through Christ Jesus. This is a big subject. Be sure to request our booklets and audio tapes on the subject. The number one benefit, the number one way the Bible can help you is, 
The Bible reveals the way to life beyond death. We'll discuss more Bible benefits in the next part of our program. But first, I'd like to offer you our free audio tape titled, How the Bible Can Help You. With this audio tape, you'll be able to review the references and quotes we've covered on this program in your own time and at your own convenience. This audio tape also includes valuable principles for Bible study. Here are the keys and strategies that will help you understand the Bible and Bible prophecy. So pick up the telephone right now and request your free audio tape titled, How the Bible Can Help You. You can also order this free audio tape on our website at tomorrowsworld.org. And if you're not already a subscriber to our bi-monthly magazine, Tomorrow's World, we'll send you a free subscription. There are seven keys to more effective Bible study. You need this informative audio tape. So pick up the telephone right now and request your free audio tape titled, How the Bible Can Help You. In the first part of our program, we discuss the importance of the Bible to us individually and nationally. President Abraham Lincoln deeply respected the Bible. He said, quote, I believe the Bible is the best gift God has ever given to man. All the good from the Savior of the world is communicated to us through this book. End of quote. Yes, the Bible reveals that Jesus Christ, the Messiah, is the Savior of the world. That's stated in John 4.42 and in 1 John 4.14. In the first part of our program, we emphasize that the Bible shows us the way to salvation through Christ, the way to eternal life. The first Bible benefit we discussed was, the Bible reveals the way to life beyond death. The second Bible benefit is, the Bible reveals the real meaning and purpose of life. What is the purpose of life? What is your purpose in life? Yes, God promises us eternal life. But what will be our eternal destiny? Will we just float around on clouds? Or does God have a greater purpose and plan for us? Ancient King David wondered about his purpose in life. When David was a shepherd boy, he spent many months and years under the night sky. And he wondered about his place in the universe. David stood in awe of the starry heavens. He also recognized the source of that universe as the Creator God. David wrote in Psalm 8, in verse 3, When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? Human beings were created in God's likeness to have an eternal relationship with him. And it's to be a loving relationship. God created the human family, and he wants you to be a part of his divine family. Notice the statement in Ephesians 3 and verse 14. The Apostle Paul wrote, For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Yes, God is the father of a family. And he wants you to be a part of a creative family that will experience activity and joy for all eternity. Most professing Christians have no clear vision of their calling in the kingdom of God. Notice this clear statement in Revelation 5, verse 10. The Apostle John writes that God has called us to become kings and priests and have made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. When Christ returns as King of kings and Lord of lords, true Christians will serve him in tomorrow's world. They will assist in teaching the rest of the world the way to lasting peace. Your Bible can help you understand your ultimate destiny. The Bible reveals the real meaning and purpose of life. That is a second Bible benefit. The third Bible benefit is, the Bible teaches us how to improve relationships and to get along with people in a godly way. One of the biggest problems some of us have is getting along with others. We may have conflicts with our boss, with our wife or husband, with our children or parents, or with friends and family. Can the Bible help you to get along better with others? Yes, it can, if you follow its instructions. Remember the two great commandments Jesus said in Matthew 22, in verse 37, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. When you apply these great commandments, you can improve your relationships with others. 
the Ten Commandments give us specific ways to love God and love our neighbor. You love your neighbor by honoring your parents, by helping rather than killing, faithfully loving your husband or wife by not committing adultery, etc. The Christian way of life, the Bible way of life, is contrary to the secular, selfish, greedy way of life. If you have your Bible, turn to Philippians 2 and verse 3. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. God teaches us to esteem others better than ourselves, that is, to value, to respect others, and to be caring and concerned for their welfare. Another principle to improve your relationships with others is to be forgiving. How many people hold on to grudges? They just won't let go. They just won't forgive. Remember what Jesus taught in the model prayer, often called the Lord's Prayer? Matthew 6 and verse 12. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Do you pray that way? Do you forgive others? 1 Corinthians 13 is known as the love chapter. If you apply just one of its precepts, you'll be on your way to improving relationships. Turn in your Bible to 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, and verse 4. Listen to this beautiful passage. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. The very first quality is patience. Love suffers long. In other words, love is patient. Are you? Applying these biblical principles can help change your life dramatically. The third Bible benefit is the Bible teaches us how to improve relationships and get along with people in a godly way. The Bible teaches the way to lasting happiness and true success. You can be happy. You can achieve true success. The fourth Bible benefit is the Bible teaches principles for true success, fulfillment, and happiness. Turn in your Bible to John, the 10th chapter. Here Jesus gives us this very profound truth. It's a very encouraging truth. Notice the contrast between worldly ways and the Messiah's way. John 10 and verse 10. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. You can have true success and abundant living if you acknowledge the Savior in all your thoughts and actions every day. There are so many wonderful biblical principles that promise us true success. The Apostle Paul stated in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And notice this key to God's blessings in Proverbs, the third chapter, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. My friends, there's a cause for every effect. The Bible gives us the true principles for success. We need to seek the true values in life, not the carnal, selfish, lustful values. King David was a man after God's own heart, as it tells us in Acts 13.22. Notice God's promise of true success here in the first psalm. Psalm 1. Turn in your Bible to the book of Psalms, Psalm 1 and verse 1. David writes under God's inspiration, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. Notice the result of meditating on God's law and God's way of life. Psalm 1 and verse 3. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. Yes, they'll truly succeed in life. Apparently, a significant percentage of Americans do not want to prosper. 
According to Barner Research, 18% of adults believe that, quote, the Ten Commandments are not relevant for people living today, end of quote. That 18% are surely missing out on life. There are many more exciting principles to successful living in your Bible. Just read the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5, 6, and 7. Read the Proverbs. You can live successfully, happily, and abundantly. How can the Bible help you? The fourth Bible benefit is, the Bible teaches principles for true success, fulfillment, and happiness. We all want to know that our future will be happy and secure. I went through a period in my life where I saw no hope for the future. All I could see was a world blown to pieces by nuclear superpowers. And frankly, that's what will happen unless Jesus Christ intervenes. But God was merciful to me. He revealed to me and billions of others, if they want to read the Bible, that Jesus Christ is coming to this earth again. That was good news for me. The Bible can help you understand what lies ahead. The fifth Bible benefit is the Bible reveals the future and how we can prepare for it. Bible prophecy reveals how God will intervene in world affairs. I hope you've been keeping up with our programs, booklets, and articles on Bible prophecy. Bible prophecy also gives us the good news of our ultimate destiny. We've already seen that God's purpose is to prepare us for his kingdom here on earth. True Christians will reign with Christ for a thousand years as kings and priests. True Christians will be transformed, born into the kingdom of God at the resurrection. That can be your future. Notice this glorious event when Christ returns. 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. The Apostle Paul writes about the resurrection. When true Christians inherit the kingdom of God, and when we are changed from mortality to immortality. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Those who are familiar with the framework of Bible prophecy know that the trumpet Paul speaks about is the last trumpet or the seventh trumpet of Revelation 11:15. That trumpet also announces the return of Christ to rule all nations. Revelation 11 and verse 15. Then the seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. What a glorious future God promises us. At the resurrection, we become immortal. The Apostle Paul continues here in 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 53. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality... Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. God wants all of us to be in his family for all eternity. You need to know the future. You need to study your Bible and learn more. The fifth Bible benefit is, the Bible reveals the future and how we can prepare for it. On today's program, we've briefly discussed five Bible benefits, five ways the Bible can help you. I urge you to make Bible reading a daily part of your life. There are many more benefits than we've had time to cover on today's program. As Lord Tennyson commented, Bible reading is an education in itself. The Bible is not only a book for today, but it is also the book of the future. As Jesus said in Luke 21, verse 33, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. Thank God that he has shared with us the truth and purpose of life. You'll learn more about that life and your future as you study your Bible. Be sure to request our free one-hour audio tape on Bible benefits and principles of Bible study. Just request your free copy of Bible Benefits. Roderick Meredith and I will continue to share with you the amazing truth of the Bible, the teachings of Jesus Christ, and the exciting end-time prophecies and their meaning. 
So join us again next week right here at this same time.